All right. So welcome guys to the week three of Freelance Friday. Freelance Friday is a new series that we have started where every Friday at 9 p.m. we have a live session and we will be giving you latest insight, tips, tricks, mindset and everything that you need to succeed as a freelancer and eventually build a services agency. So when we think about the career paths that people can take, there are multiple career paths and you are basically going to go through a journey, right? So this day and age is about being an expert and being an expert in a specific field. All right, so what is the expert journey? You start out as a student. As a student, you do not have any experience and you start learning something and then you become an intern or a working professional, right? Once you graduate from college and you want to get into the corporate world, becoming an intern is one of the best choices that you have. And you can upgrade from becoming an intern to a working professional where you are getting a monthly salary. I will just call it employee, right? Intern or employee. But there are certain disadvantages in being an employee. You know, first of all, uh, this is going to be great for, you know, getting some experience and building your personal network and you are going to learn that you will not have much freedom you have to work inside a company you know you will you will get exposed to corporate politics which will make you realize that boss i cannot be an employee all the time I need to do something of my own, right? And there is a risk that you will have a single source of income. You won't have multiple sources of income. So from being an intern to an employee, you can become a digital freelancer and you do not have enough life experience to become a coach yet or a mentor yet to other people because you are just starting out. You are just gaining some experience. So the idea of becoming a digital freelancer, and I call it digital freelancer, is because you also have people like freelance makeup artists and freelance photographers. That is not what we are going to learn about, at least from me, because as a digital freelancer, you have the freedom to work from anywhere. You can live in a tier two city at a lower cost of living. And as long as you have a computer and internet connection, you can provide freelance services to your clients. So you can have some three to five clients so imagine instead of being in a job and getting like one lakh a month in salary you can have four clients who pay you twenty five thousand monthly retainer so that way even if one client goes away your income won't stop stop right so you will have income safety and it will never dry up right so you also end up getting some experience in building a business because a lot of people can survive in corporate just by putting some ice for the boss uh, and somehow they will manage even if they do not re do real work and you might not uh, get enough skills, right? But here you are experience, getting experience in building a business. You have to do sales, you have to do value delivery and you have to operate under, let's say, uncertainty. So nothing is 100% confirmed and that's how entrepreneurs are, right? You, you cannot have 100% confirmation with anything and you go ahead and do it anyway but once you have uh, got a little bit of experience uh, you have experience in a particular skill it could be website design content writing or whatever the skill might be then you can become a digital mentor i am a digital mentor right so you have gained some experience through work you have personal branding and you mentor a group of students personally so that's when you become a digital mentor. And a lot of people are like, you know, uh, very serious into the entire online coaching and online mentoring industry. I like to use the word mentor because coaching and training is on specific skills. Hey, you come and I will just coach you. This is the content that you want. I will just tell you how to go ahead and do this and you do that. That is coaching and training. But mentor is also going to be an inspiration, right? Inspiration on all areas of life. So how many of you are learning from me because you are not just learning digital marketing from me, but the other areas of things that uh, I tell also is very relevant for you. 
uh, you are like getting inspired by, by me and want to become like me, want to build a startup, want to build a team, right? Just type me in the chat box if I am a mentor for you. I am not just a coach or a trainer. Coach or trainer will only teach you a specific skill. Like huh, lead generation, karo, Facebook ads karo and everything. But here it is not just a coaching or training on a specific skill. It is a mentorship. And I am not sitting next to you in an offline classroom and teaching you. I am teaching you via an online webinar like this, right? Which means that I am a digital mentor. So, so that is the next stage in the evolution. Then you can become an agency owner. So agency owner, may you are providing services uh, to five plus clients, right? When you are providing services to five plus clients, you need to scale it with a team. You need to learn delegation. You need to work with other contractors or freelancers. And you might need to build like a team uh, even if you don't like necessarily have like an offline office, you can have like a digital agency, right? But when it comes to services, you are providing primarily services here. So we don't usually call a services startup as a, uh, you know, startup. We usually call it an agency. But if you are getting into SaaS, you are getting into EdTech, which is like much more scalable and possibility of attracting investment right you can attract investment by being a startup founder so people will invest in your company and you know how startups are valued right if you are making one crore per year in revenue and let's say the value of the company is five crores somebody wants to buy 10 percent of your company they will give you 50 lakhs and you use that 50 lakhs to make a five crore company into a 10 crore company so when you can attract investments then you actually become a startup founder and eventually when you have built enough capital right you have enough capital and you can invest in other businesses. So this is the overall journey of an expert. And I have put seven stages here. And how many of you think that these seven stages are uh, what you will be going through? And at what stage are you in? Just put the number in the chat box. Out of these seven stages, what stage are you in as an expert? Just out of college, which means that it's one, right? Some people are in second, some people are in third stage. Great, awesome. So I would also like to tell you the way we are building our products and services is aligned with this journey. And if you go ahead and look at my own alignment of what we are doing as a business, the different products and services that we have created align for different people. So we have a pixeltrack.com, which is a service agency, B2B clients, we do digital marketing and it's a done for you service, right? It's a done for you service, DFY, because if we are not running a digital marketing agency ourselves, how can we teach you digital marketing? So that is why even though our education business is more profitable than our agency, we still go ahead and teach people and uh, we still go ahead and do the services to other businesses because we will end up forgetting digital marketing if we don't do digital marketing day, day in and day out. And then we have our red tech where we have different products. So here, uh, micro internship program, a lot of people here are uh, an intern of my internship program. How many people here are interns? Just type intern in the chat box if you are part of the internship program, right? Uh, if you are, if you could just call it MIP, right? Micro internship program. So amazing. So you guys are like, you know, just starting out. Uh, want to get your first job or client. Then we have a product called Career Kickstarter, uh, which is an uh, upgrade to micro internship where you want like one-on-one -on -one hand holding uh, from a personal mentor. Then for each and every skill, you need to go ahead and, you know, learn all that skills, right? So you have FB Ads Mastery, Google Ads Mastery, Sales Mastery, and we are creating more mastery courses. Alpha Club is for people who want to build an agency. Uh, and, and also people who want to scale their business as mentors and freelancers. And then we have something called Master's Guild, which is only for people who are making 5 plus lakhs a month in revenue. And we are going to help them scale to like 50 lakh a month in revenue. So, and we do a lot of free content. Uh, we do content marketing, ebooks, books, weekly webinars, workshops, newsletters, blogs, community. Uh, then we have softwares and platforms. And then we do offline. 
we have digital marketing club digital freelancer summit which i just talked about we are also planning to create something called digital mentor summit where mentors from different fields can come and uh, you know attend this event and then we have alpha club ke liye, we have alpha mastermind retreat so how many of you think that you know this is a good strategy right to approach and then we have softwares and platforms uh, where we are planning to create our own landing page tool affiliate network help desk affiliate network help desk and uh, let's say crm software so all this we are planning to build in the future so as we stabilize our business from the agency and the education business we will roll over the profit to building you know softwares and platforms so that is the overall plan and how many of you think that this is a like you know good plan just uh, let me know in the chat box what do you think uh, the overall business vision uh, is you know how uh, we are like progressing and we know that we need to go ahead and you know cover the entire market right throughout the life cycle of the person everything is interconnected because today you will be a student tomorrow you will be a freelancer then you might want to do coaching you might want to skip coaching and build an agency or a startup so that way we are going ahead and you know building this entire sequence in which you will be able to uh, you know depending on which position you are in you will be able to go ahead and uh, you know uh, avail our services right so hey giant so giant is here so Ready, founder, how uh, many of you not know? able to start my video can you just allow me there somewhere? one second check now yes all right yes. say hi giant hey guys oh wow we have 155 people here great yes so good so, so giant is our uh, co-founder for pixel track and uh, the sales mastermind who is building a sales team for high ticket sales and everything and jayanti is also uh, you know very good when it comes to freelancing agency and especially when it comes to outreach right so last week jayanti did a call where we did about outreach so yeah so let's talk about personal branding and why personal branding is important and so Jayant, you have had some experience with uh, your, uh, you know, freelancing and agency. And uh, what activities did you do to build your personal brand in front of your clients, especially when it comes to getting clients for freelancing and agency? And how did your YouTube channel, LinkedIn and LinkedIn posts and, you know, all this help you? And what is the strategy? Like a lot of people don't know how to go ahead and even start their personal branding, what content to post, to who I should write. So tell a little bit tips about that. Absolutely. So, I mean, when I was, I started, it was a little bit of a mess. Back then, we didn't have chat GPT. Now, thankfully, we do. Uh, so, it's a pretty good uh, tool to like get some content ideas up and running. But uh, the whole idea is like your target customer has a lot of problems and you somehow solve those problems. And in that way of solving problems, you kind of build a trust in their heads. So, every day, uh, and, and there is no other way to like build a very, very strong personal brand apart from like really being in the, in front of your people's eyes every single day. That's what I do. I post in LinkedIn every single day, just like you write an email pretty much once in a week. So what I do is I wake up, I write something, pretty much write something usually which is either educational or it triggers people. So I love posts that trigger people. <laughs> I love how people fight on my comments. So it's like, it's always fun, but at least I'm, I'm in the forefront. Like there is something that I'm posting and it is helping some, some person somehow. And, uh, in YouTube, uh, I'm not, an, I'm not very active nowadays because you know, I'm at home, there is no setup or anything, but at least I try to post once in a week. What it does is like every week, this video, By the way, hold it there. We need to tell people what is happening on Monday in Jayant's life. <laughs> Monday, Jayant is getting married. <laughs> and uh, Friday, he is like sitting on a webinar. I did not even call Jayant for this webinar. I thought I should not disturb him. But he couldn't like, you know, keep away from work. This is my life. <laughs> say congrats or say all the best. Poor bride Mandari Singh. Hey, good luck. 
<laughs> if the bride is there here then i would not have you know joined the webinar maybe yeah bride is at uh, the bride's house jayanti is at jayan's house yeah mm. awesome okay. anyway back to the topic so yeah the idea is like being consistent and like posting you know content regularly to your uh, for your clients uh, for your target audience and it sounds simple but that's pretty much it and i was listening to this podcast very recently and i think this might change a lot of uh, you know change a lot of perspectives i was doing a little bit of research around how many pieces of content i should produce to be in top 1% of the youtubers or how many pieces of content should i produce in, for me being to be in the top 1% of the linkedin people and to my surprise how many of you want to know the stats i mean this, this will be rough stats because i need to figure out the websites where i learned this from but how many of you want to learn the stats that i learned very recently yeah i'll tell you this if you have published more than 50 videos in your youtube channel you are pretty much better than 90% of the youtubers because 90% of the youtube channels don't even you know don't even hit 50 videos out of the rest of the 10% people or rest of the 10 of the 10% of the channels if you publish more than 100 videos in a youtube channel 90% of this audience you know, you know almost like 99% of the youtubers don't hit 100 videos in their channels so if you are published, not shorts, shorts are, you know, they, they don't work, they're bullshit. <laughs> don't tell me about short Yeah, do pants. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> do pants, do long stuff. So uh, what happens is when you, when you have published more than 100 videos, you are pretty much at top 1% of the YouTubers. And do you know how much effort it takes to, you know, create 100 videos? When I started my YouTube journey, it took me 100 days because I was going live almost every single day. And it just takes consistency, not even, it doesn't even take hard work. It, to be honest, when <clears throat> Jayan started posting regular videos, each video used to get like 50, 60 views. And he used to put so much effort. Yeah. And it's like, Are, he has some 200, 300 subscribers. It's not effort. I don't know. Uh, like that, I was feeling, but, but guess what? I also started like that. And now uh, Giant has crossed 5,000 subscribers. So until you cross that, you know, a particular threshold, let's say 1,000 subscribers is the first goal. You have to keep posting videos and keep showing up in front of your audience. And even if you have like some 10 people who are regularly following you and, you know, they are like liking it, then YouTube algorithm will pick it up. Slowly start showing it to more people and you don't need to necessarily just depend on YouTube's algorithm to get the distribution. You can have lead magnets, you can you know, uh, build your own audience and then send your audience to the YouTube videos. Yeah, that, that's pretty much it. Mm -hmm. And the thing is like, th that's what I mean. Like you don't like, you don't need to do a lot of hard work to like build your personal brand. You just need to stay consistent. There's a lot of difference. Hard work is like so difficult to go and sit and edit and stuff. Half the time you don't have to edit only. So yesterday I was checking uh, one of my favorite YouTubers. His name is Nate. The YouTube channel name is Channel Makers. So he was uh, uh, creating a video. Uh, I'll show you this, and it was so inspiring. So he used to get a lot of comments saying, "Hey, you know what? I don't have a setup like you. I don't have an editing skill like you. How will my YouTube channel grow?" And this guy literally created a video where it's like, "I did not edit this video at all on purpose. Seven minutes video, very well planned." No editing, no cuts. The only thing that he did was made sure that the audio was right. And uh, looking at such stuff, it's like, you know what, like, it's so easy. This is what people don't do it enough. Yeah. So in fact, I'm planning to start a new YouTube channel. The name of the new YouTube channel is called Calm Founder. So I'm going to talk about the challenges of startups, building a startup and generally business stuff. And I'm going to publish all the videos without editing. Either I'm going to record it on my phone or I'm going to use the, you know, computer webcam. Maybe I will just put a thumbnail, but zero editing. And I don't want to mix it with digital Deepak because digital Deepak, may, there is a focus area. Here I might just go on a rant, go on a long ramble. And I will show people that, hey, you can get to like, you know, initial traction by starting a YouTube, new YouTube channel. Yep. So stay tuned for that. And uh, again, as Jayan said, you need to stay consistent, right? So. Freelance Friday, this is the third Freelance Friday that we are doing and we are going to do this consistently for a very long period of time. And uh, eventually you will see 
that we will have 1000 people live attending it every week then we will have 5000 people live 10000 people live we will eventually get there the idea is to keep doing it consistently and how many of you have become like super fans of freelance friday just type ff in the chat box that this is the third time you are attending it live and you are like totally loving it and every week it's like a recharge for the particular topic that you are in where you want to become a successful freelancer right so amazing so as we start building fans like this slowly slowly it's gonna grow you might like invite other people to you know start doing this and for us also it, like we are forced to be consistent right when we have promised that every friday we will show up in front of the audience and talk about the freelance topic so one is to write books and write content which is more like a long-term thing um like you know i i'm going to publish a book called digital freelancing and usme whatever concepts is going to be there uh that's more like a foundational concept right but here on a weekly you know uh, feature what happens is that let's say we discovered some new tool let's say we discovered some new thing we are also learning you know always uh, through our own experience by doing the agency and freelancing and then we are going to talk about that so that is also needed right so so yeah i mean um, that's that's how you build a personal brand i would also like to show you how i use my you know uh, blogging for consistency uh, by the way this is jayan's channel uh, go ahead and subscribe uh, give him more subscribers all right watch, the link <laughs> just subscribe please keep watching <laughs> yeah please keep so watching like comment um, is it like a collaborator thing how is digital deepak video coming here or you can add it oh, i have i have added our podcast in a uh, so basically all the interviews i did i created a uh, playlist okay. for crorepati consultant podcast oh nice crorepati consultant bad name but i just added it <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. All the yes nice so uh, by the way i i also want to talk about blogging and the power of regular blogging so you guys know that i started this whole thing with the blog digital deepak and initially when i started publishing articles on my blog i did not have much traction at all i published two articles a month and uh, just because i loved writing and initially when i started in back in 2013 um, it was just a way to make my profile stand out when i am applying for jobs so linkedin may if i put somebody wants to hire me they will look at my blog and they will probably feel like i am a better candidate than the other candidates who are applying for digital marketing jobs so here uh, you can see that there are so many articles published over a period of time but for the first 4 years right the first article was published on april 10th 2013 and i just learned about amazon route 53 and i wrote about it then i wrote about content marketing 2.0 then mobile marketing how to use facebook ads so if you go ahead and see it's just like two articles in a month may may two articles june may three articles then july may i see two articles then august may i see a few articles but i did this consistently for four years and because of consistently doing it eventually it started getting traction and you can see you know how long i have been publishing so right now it's not like there are thousands and thousands of books there are there is 500 word 500 articles in digital deepak and each article is around 500 to 1000 words that's all so you should definitely start a blog uh, if you want to use wordpress use wordpress i have migrated digital deepak to this uh, platform called ghost and ghost has a uh, way to like you know basically send it out as an email newsletter whenever i publish a new blog post and it's also like very well seo optimized and loads very fast you can see that you know how fast it loads so that way if you start a blog and start writing initially yes nobody is going to you know, read what you write and if you keep writing if you keep writing over a period of time it will start becoming better and and your quality will increase and you will find your niche you will create your audience so obviously blogging is very important um, for the entire journey right uh, whether you want to become a freelancer eventually you want to become a mentor then you want to become a startup founder uh, without going ahead and putting yourself out there then nobody is going to know who you are imagine you go to a conference and you are just silently sitting at one corner right and nobody is going to give you any bow if you don't go and talk to people if you if you don't have anything to talk about then then people won't know you know what you know and people won't see you as a person of value so on the cyberspace on the digital medium you go ahead and if you write an article that's when people will take you seriously 
content yep. is what gets attention attention is what gets authority right so blogging is a very powerful way to go ahead and build your personal brand and another way to build your personal brand is to write a book and a lot of people are thinking that writing hmm. blogs are a bit boring Boss, that's what makes the money bro <laughs> building a business is boring going to the gym yeah. is boring everything is boring boss <laughs> i mean इंजीनियरिंग फॉर फोर इयर्स एंड फोर इयर्स के बाद यू हैव नथिंग टू शो फॉर इट Sit and write a blog for four years. You will have at yeah. least a personal brand, which will help you get a job, which will help you get client, which will help you get students, and eventually it might help you get investors as well, right? Mm. So, so yeah. So I don't want to like keep answering questions right now. There are too many questions, but let me also tell you about uh, book publishing a little bit. Uh, so this is something that you might not want to do immediately, but you have to definitely keep it in mind and uh, keep it as like you know something in the pipeline for the future. so what i did was that i started book publishing with kindle direct publishing and here you can see my kindle direct publishing dashboard uh, some of the books that i launched so one of the books which i have here it's called product launch success blueprint and you won't believe this book is only 10000 words 10000 words is just like a very long blog post and this book is 40 pages but this book this book gives me a lot of authority imagine you go to a client meeting or imagine you have a potential client or an employer and you set a copy of that book to the employer how impressed they will be and you don't need to like you know break your head on how to publish the book take a word document write the entire 10000 20000 words whatever you want to write go to fiverr.com and you can pay something like 5 to 10 dollars so let's just search for kindle paperback so lot of people will convert your word document into a format which can be uploaded on kindle and once you upload on kindle there is an option where you can also create a paperback version and a hard cover version of the same book and you just need to upload the file and it will be ready so here i can order author copies if i want of this particular book i can order author copies and i ordered a bunch of author copies it came directly from the us so here you can see paperback actions order author copies and you can order as less as low as like you know uh 50 50 quantities right so i would say so right now amazon.in is not yet available for printing but here you can see total cost is 107 dollars so each book is 2 dollars 15 cents which is around less than 200 rupees right and then it will cost a little bit for shipping but there are other ways to publish a book in india itself uh like notion press which will get each book published for you as less than, as less uh, as low as 100 rupees right so having a book published and having blogs and having writing is something very important for your long term success and uh, so vijay kumar is saying i think sandhya ma'am is standing near <laughs> while you say about marriage so good observation yes sandhya is sitting right here you want to say hi Just say hi. Hi. What is this guy doing here? Oh, this guy. Showing my handsome face. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Apparently, I'm more handsome than your husband. So people are like. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you show up on your wedding day on time, unlike Deepak. <laughs> yeah, I'll I'll be there. Nihal Marik. Let me know. Yeah. Right. So. So yeah, guys. Um. back to the point what was i talking about um book publishing right so so you have to write a lot of people think that hey i am not like you know uh, good enough to go ahead and write books and you know uh, all that but you will eventually get good at it you have to start somewhere and in this day and age where you can just go ahead and publish a blog write something and just put your thoughts out online is a super power 200 years back 300 years back you did not have printing paper man imagine if you had a thought 
you could only say it to a bunch of people around you and and those people are probably not interested in your niche or what you have to talk about right so here with internet with a single click you can publish something and anybody in the world can see people on the international space station can also see and tomorrow if we have people on mars they can also see and isn't that an amazing power are we even capitalizing on that power completely definitely not so that is why in the micro internship program uh, i tell people to go ahead and start up blog and one of the exercises i give them is that hey go ahead and write a article publish it you know because writing is a super power and writing is thinking a lot of people are like hey how do i become a public speaker you know how do i get good with youtube videos how do i present myself in front of an audience a lot of people have that question you are finding difficulty presenting in front front of an audience like youtube videos or in front of a public audience because you don't know how to talk and the flow of thoughts is not coming to you very easily now i am able to do these webinars with 500 or even 1000 people i can talk in front of 1000 people on a stage with clarity because the clarity comes from writing 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 and obviously where does writing come from because you do things which gives you experience you can talk about it but you should also read a lot right when you keep reading you will get inspiration for new ideas so you have if you have to be a content creator you have to be a content consumer like you can start with something as simple as you listen to this podcast now you will forget all about it if you don't write right so why don't you go ahead and just put it on linkedin like a 100 word or 200 word post where you are writing about what you learned today how do you build your personal brand as a freelancer you can write about it it's not like hey deepak is already talking about freelancing can i also write about it no when you write about it you are going to mix your own life experience with it which means that it becomes unique content right so you don't need to feel like hey i am copying content that way if you look at it then 60000 years back humans were in africa and then we went all over the world everybody has on some level got inspired by other people right we are all standing on the shoulders of giants there is no such there is no new thing under the sun it's all like mix and match uh, just like you know how reproduction happens like you know you keep mixing and matching all the dna and it gives rise to like unique people your content will always be unique and today you can also use a little bit of chat gpt's help and i published a video on my youtube channel where if you feel like writing and putting words together is so difficult then what you can do is that you can take google docs and inside google docs you can put voice typing all right so i will show you this live in action so you can go to google docs go to tools click on voice typing click this and you can basically talk out your article but when you are talking out your article it is not going to be in a very readable format because you have ums and ahs in the middle and sometimes you will say the same thing over and over again it will be like very long sentences without any punctuation or anything and sitting and editing this is going to be a very very difficult task because instead of sitting and editing this you might as well write it from the scratch so it's very difficult to edit it so i do not recommend editing it but what you can do is that you can copy this entire content put it on chat gpt and ask chat gpt to rewrite it and chat gpt is intelligent enough to understand what is the context of this particular article and it will give you a very readable article you can use this method to write blog posts which are going to be unique content i would not recommend going ahead and just putting prompts getting chat gpt to write an article copy paste into your blog it will it will be like you know it people will find out that it is a chat gpt article there won't there won't be anything unique in that but what you can do is that you can write an article like the way i am writing it right now then copy paste it then you can even write book chapters through chat gpt you can write blog posts using chat gpt you can create video scripts using chat gpt so now that i have written this much content through basically voice typing let's see how it works inside uh, chat gpt uh we'll stop this now so yeah so you can see that there are so many spelling mistakes here it says blog post instead of blog post and 
this is like basically unreadable. So copy this, go to ai.com, use chat GPT-4, click on here, paste this, and I will just say, rewrite this in a readable format so that I can publish this in a blog, right? So I have posted this. So I use chat GPT-4, I'm paying $20 a month for it, but if you want to use chat GPT free version also, it will be effective enough. All right. So copy this post it in your blog. So you see how beautifully it has come out, right? Proper punctuation, proper writing. How many of you think this method is wow? Just type wow in the chat box. This is beautiful. <laughs> so now you tell me a reason that you are not going to write blog posts and you are not going to write. There is no reason you won't write, right? Yeah. So you, you can basically speak for five, 10 minutes and get like a 500 word, thousand word article ready. So you can I use this method to write something more ready. So one more uh, question that I normally get is mm. like, what should I talk about? Uh, so I have created a series of prompt for that as well. Uh, mm. In a minute. Yeah. So what I've done is like, this, this was somebody's LinkedIn post that I was reading. I put, okay, here's the cool content marketing plan. Here's what I do. Because you're a freelancer, you usually like solve somebody's problem. In our case, in our agency, we help people generate leads. We usually have a specific offer. Let's say appointment generation. I just added it as an example because I'm an expert in cold outreach and your specific audience. Majority of our clients are agency owners, not just marketing agency owners. And you put like, let's create a irresistible, uh, irresistible content by approaching the problem and solution from different angles. And you put five different angles, how my service solves this problem, what happens if the problem is not addressed, what happens if the problem is solved, why are you not able to solve this problem, what's the best way to solve this problem, and different angles to the solution, which is like how I can solve the problem, what happens if you don't choose my offer and go with someone else's, what happens if I solve your problems, why you can't solve the problem without me and why my solution is a game changer, and it basically creates like 10 different angles based on this, based on this particular offer. You see, now you give them three formats, listicle, actionable items, motivational post. So 10 into three, it creates like 30 ideas for you to publish wow. content on. And then you wow. just voice type it. In fact, what I'm doing is as you speak, like because Didi mentioned, like we should be like writing a lot. I am also taking notes. Uh, I'll just share this prompt, this document with you guys uh, after our meeting today. One. This is the first prompt. And this is like the second prompt, which, you know, come on, SK Abad, don't <laughs> come back to me saying, oh, Jayant, I'm running out of content ideas after this. <laughs> so cool stuff. Awesome. Cool. So how many of you guys found today's session useful on a scale of 10, 1 to 10, how useful was today's session? Awesome. Fantastic. So let's capture some of that energy uh, with some noise on LinkedIn that we can create. So I will just share a link to a LinkedIn post where I'm asking you guys, how was today's session on personal branding? And please comment there. We are doing all these sessions for free and we would like to get more exposure uh, so that more people can join. So I will just stop the chat for a while. Put the link there. Please go ahead and don't just put like a single word like awesome, great or something. Just like, you know, as I said, you have to write and only when you write, you will become a better writer, become a better speaker 
become a better public speaker, YouTuber, whatever it is. So try to frame a sentence there, put it there. And as you guys are going ahead and writing that, if you have any questions you want to ask us, any question at all, we will take some questions for the next few minutes before ending the session. So chat box open again. So go ahead and ask any question that you have in mind. And guys, I'm going, we are only going to respond to quality questions. Don't come and ask, sir, sir, how do I become a digital marketer? It's like I did four years of civil engineering and as if somebody is ask, coming and asking, sir, how do I build a building? How can I reply to that? <laughs> so, yeah. So not only you can go with blogger.com, but why do you want to create a free blog? Create your own domain name and basically publish something on your own website. Radhika Devi says, I got some clarity today. Thank you. Thank you, Radhika, for attending the session. Jay, do you have any LinkedIn stats to share? Uh, Jay, you are muted. Yeah. So yeah, I've been talking about uh, personal branding a lot and how it can help you grow your freelancing. So till now, okay, we understood we have to publish a lot of content. We removed some barriers and how exactly you can like publish content faster using the voice typing and uh the consistent publishing you know that methods with uh you know the chat gpd how many of you would love to see the kind of leads that i get in linkedin and by the way i don't have like a lot of leads you know followers or something in linkedin but because of consistent publishing every single day i see like four or five messages like this hey you know what i need help with this somebody's saying i need guidance they can be alpha club members this person is straight up hitting me saying, oh, you know what, uh, this guy is working in Deloitte and they are looking for email marketers. So with this, what happens is with me consistently publishing content on email marketing, cold outreach, getting leads, getting sales, a lot of these people are seeing me and whenever they are ready, they are like, you know what, this guy is the best guy to you know reach out to when it comes to like doing work for us. And trust me, when you do this for 100 days, I follow this rule of hundreds. Whatever you do, be it a YouTube channel, be it a LinkedIn thing, be it whatever, you pick a niche and pick a medium, do publish consistently for 100 days, you will definitely get results. Even in Alpha Club members, they ask me, okay, okay, how do I like get a lot of response with cold emails? I'm like, send 100 emails for 100 days, you'll get one client. So I would, you know, urge you to like follow this rule of hundreds. And what this does is eventually like uh, builds that sort of brand and builds your visibility and gets you uh, inside your uh, gets you get you more gets you more leads inside your funnel so yeah that works yeah it will feel like you are just talking to an empty room when you start but there is no yeah. other way you have to start like that and the people who can go through that pain eventually be consistent are the ones who come out on the other side with flying colors right so i just have a mental hack though yeah, so uh, when I used to have like this 13 views in a video, some 50 views in a video. So I used to imagine uh, what if these 50 people were in a single room and I'm speaking to them. The room will be full, right? So the room is so much full that I could not even like, I, I'd be freaked out if 50 people are standing in front of me in the room. Right now, when I see like 1,500 odd views in my YouTube videos, I, you know, I imagine the same thing. That means I'm literally filling up an entire stadium. All these people are sitting and watching my content. So even if 13 people are seeing or 10 people are seeing, two people are seeing your videos, just this is a quick mental hack. Just imagine all those people in a single room with you. And uh, you know it does change a little bit of mindset and gets you motivated to post more. Awesome. So this four step uh, uh, thing for content writing creative process is a very good uh, article that I wrote long back. Uh, thank you, Prachi, for sharing it again. So guys, go ahead, click that bookmark it. I also wanted to show you guys my analytics. Um, so if you install your blog and then you install Google Analytics on it, you will be able to track how many visitors you are getting on an everyday basis. And here you can see that I'm getting like 300 to 400 visitors a day consistently. Uh, even, even though I'm not like so consistent with publishing articles over a period of time, 
it starts building up. And if I send out an email, I will get like a spike and I can see a lot of people are clicking on it and uh, the live visitor count is going up here. So if I go to real time, I can see right now 47 people and pretty much all over India. Very nice to see that the distribution, like, you know, different people from different places are visiting. From Bangalore, we have six people. From Mumbai, we have five people. So if you like, you know, create a blog, install analytics, you know, you will get 10 visitors a day, 20 visitors a day. At some point, you will get like 50 visitors a day, 100 visitors a day. And then that's how you grow slowly, slowly, right? So yeah, that's that's about it for today's session. And how many of you want Sandhya to talk about freelancing because she has become a freelancer on the next session of Freelance Friday? Just type Sandhya in the chat box if you want. Sandhya, are you ready to do the session next week? Yes. <laughs> All right, so Sandhya has recently quit. Uh, her full-time job and she is becoming a full-time freelancer. You want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, sure. And tell them what you are going to tell them uh, in the next session. So, so you have done a little bit of freelancing already. What is your experience with that? Okay. So I come from a finance background. Uh, I was a CA student, but then I completely changed my life in the last three, four years. Uh, and I became a full-time writer. So I have done freelancing for over three years now. And uh, I have, I, I joined a job, but then I realized that, you know, once a freelancer will always become a freelancer, you'll, you'll always choose your freedom over, you know, a cubicle. So there's nothing wrong in a nine to five job. It's just that, you know, like once you feel the other side of, you know, the other side of the horizon, you don't want to come back. Right. So that is how I yes. felt. And it also is like, um, it also has the downfalls. I'm not saying that, you know, it's very fancy. Sometimes you don't have a client. Uh, like when you're a beginner, you need to build your portfolio in such a way that uh, it is suitable for a certain client. Like what we do, sup suppose, for example, if you're applying for a job, if you are applying for a job at 10 different companies, and if you send the same CV at 10 different companies, there is a high chance that out of the 10, only one might want to look at your CV because he'll be, the job description is like a question and yeah. your CV should be an answer and it should have the words that he's looking for or it should have the skills that he's looking for. And the mistake that we do is we just pick our CV and then we send it randomly to some 10, 15 companies and then get dejected that, oh, nobody called me. The same happens in freelancing, you know. Um, suppose a client from FinTech is asking me to send me the uh, samples and I send him my entire portfolio. He doesn't have so much time. So your best, you know, three picks of finance content, you should send to a finance client. The same way, if you are sending something to an edtech client, you can send three different articles to an edtech client. Or you can even, you know, pick your niche and call yourself just a SaaS uh, content writer or something like that. So that is something I learned uh, and I have been working on it. You have to constantly keep updating your, you know, portfolio or you have to constantly keep um, making yourself authoritative in the industry by doing good work. Welcome to the world of unemployables. <laughs> yes. you see you yeah. have some fans already so yeah. next friday <laughs> session can you please take it <laughs> guys yeah, that's please good. encourage sandhya she's hesitating like yeah. tell her that you want her you want her to tell about her experience and then next friday me and jen can take a break from yeah. friday and sandhya can jen should friday, definitely take, take a break, a break. <laughs> I, I, i'll jen, tell you like okay i'll really keep sandhya start experience. from like scratch and it's like so inspiring to watch her. I mean, she landed huge clients. You name it, big startups like Class Plus. What is the recent one? Jupiter. Uh, yeah, Jupiter. the recent one is Giraffe. Giraffe. Working uh, yeah. for this company, and um, I worked there for three months, and then I started feeling like, no, I need to. मुझे पहाड़ों में जाके लिखना है. मुझे बीच के सामने बैठ के लिखना है. And I couldn't do that unless you know my manager says yes to a three-day छुट्टी, right? 
even though the work uh, work you know the the working days was five days per week but I still felt like nahi yaar, mujhe, uh, today I want to you know like dip my feet in the river and I just want to come back and start writing to you know give me that productivity so I had to say sorry to the company but um, they came back to me saying that you know hey we would like to have you as our freelance writer so after the job I'm doing the same job but as a freelancer right now <laughs> be so good that your company can't fire you yes <laughs> company hires you as a freelancer that, that should be yeah yeah so, so thankfully the founders you know found uh, they they found my oh founders found my writing very interesting so uh, i i had to continue there as a freelancer but it also gives me this mental space that all the work that i was doing in a week i can finish it in a day and then the rest of the time you know i can work for some four other clients and make four times of my salary so yeah. it's just to uh, very nice but i was working 9 to 5 back then here, as a freelancer, some days I'm working nine to nine. Some days I'm not working at all. Some days I'm just sleeping. Some days I'm just ordering from Swiggy and Zomato and eating. Some and days she's making days... us curd rice. Oh, yes. Please <laughs> and some days oh, I miss that curd rice so much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So now I have extra time to fight with Deepak also. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Cool. So... Thanks, thanks, Sandhya, for the yeah, input sure. and making it light and fun. So uh, I will right. put you All right, the guys, stage next week. If you week. want to see me next week, then uh, please vote for me to become the Indian Idol. <laughs> yes. So back to some Q&A. Uh, so guys, uh, don't put it on the Q&A session. I might have missed it. Just put it on the chat box, guys, whatever questions you have, and we will answer the questions. Yeah. which is the best template for linkedin outreach to company ceos okay we'll take we'll take questions related to personal branding if that's possible because last week i think i already shared a lot of templates and everything you should go watch those because then it becomes like off topic and since you're talking about what is the best template to reach out to company ceos we don't use a template we use a framework uh, normally when you are reaching out to uh, companies so normally what we do is instead of directly blindly reaching out to 100 different people, we, we go to LinkedIn job section, search uh, SEO, all the companies who are hiring for SEO professionals, we hit their CEO saying that, you know what, instead of hiring one guy or three guys, just hire our agency, get it done with. They usually, uh, you know, uh, reply back positively, that works. Did you want to take some questions? Yeah. Uh, so many questions are coming up. Shall I use mind map only for some time on YouTube? Absolutely. You can use mind map slide deck. If you hesitate showing your face on YouTube, um, uh, and a lot of people who get started definitely have that hesitation. When I started creating online, uh, content, I did have that hesitation of showing my face. So I created like slide decks and all that stuff. And that should be like more than enough for you to like, you know, get started. So use mind map, use slide text. That should be more than enough. Can you do a webinar separately on Kindle book publishing? Yes, absolutely. I can do that. Um, I'm a B2B yeah. SaaS writer. So if I keep uploading blogs to my site and show it as my portfolio, absolutely, bro. You should like uh, follow this guy, Justin Welsh. If you guys don't know him already. Uh, so Justin Welsh has a newsletter we base, which he basically publishes as a blog called the saturday solo printer and what it was every saturday he will publish like a blog a blog post which he sends as a, a newsletter and in his linkedin post he will like give like a small hint what he does and uh, wait you know what instead of this i'll go to justinwelsh.me and uh, you go to his guides so every Saturday he will publish one article and he has been doing this for like years and years now, which has grown his email list to more than one lakh and his revenue to more than a million. So hundred percent, please do that. So I think our freelance Friday is like similar, like solopreneur Saturdays. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. Nice. Uh, okay. Personal branding all about publishing valuable content in front of the target audience. 
not necessarily publishing valuable content is a way to build your personal brand but personal brand is what people think about you when you are not there what do you tell your friends about digital deepak if somebody is asking you hey what is the best resource for learning digital marketing freelancing agency you will say digital deepak that is personal branding so sir i am good with kannada but i am poor in english shall i blog in kannada is it worth you can start if you get traction why not still a very big market there yeah So Karthik, send out hundred emails. Try more. Uh, write thirty better. emails, bro. Thirty emails is not like not uh -huh. even like thirty emails is what we send in half a day. Yeah, half a day, three hours. Three thousand emails per month you can send. Hundred emails a day. Hundred emails per day for mm -hmm. hundred days. Not even like three months. Yeah, thirty days. Hundred emails. How do we day. get the emails? Watch Freelance Friday Week Two, where Jayan talked about lead generation. Only. <laughs> yeah maybe i can take a session on just cold emailing somewhere in the future mm. that will take a lot of time yeah uh, is personal branding value okay this is something that really has shared how can we become a freelance writer i mean again be specific this is like we'll pick out the right kind of questions uh how to effectively Re, uh, how to promote effectively real estate consulting services and my projects at Instagram and LinkedIn. Ganesh, have you seen some of the influencers, this real estate influencer, they'll show like videos of the, you know, the, the properties and all. I keep watching them all day long. They're so beautiful. And they publish those kind of content like, hey, here is a flat in Koramangla for rent. It has to be fully furnished. This is a fan. This is the balcony. And then they will ask people to like, you know, comment below what they think that that's essentially sharing content and somebody who is looking for a good flat they will put down the content tell me what is the price and everything that's how it is awesome cool so anything else guys i think we can wind up today's session i, I don't see a lot of deep questions i see like what is the best channel to reach out so uh, very surface level questions guys think harder when you are asking the questions better the quality of the question better will be the answer yeah somebody is asking how to use twitter Are bro make one work no go to www.twitter.com create an account with a lot of content <laughs> oh, <sorry. laughs> that's, uh, that's you ask questions like this this is the kind of answer you will get yeah what made dd select giant as co-founder good question yeah really what made you select giant mm -hmm. as a co-founder uh so basically when i launched batch four of the internship program i used to do a lot of late night sessions and because i was bored i was at salem no parties you know uh no distractions and 11 12 i'm like bored so take a session karenge. giant used to be there in every session so I was like, okay, this guy is like super enthusiastic to learn, uh, put a pin on it. I also saw that Jayant was so helpful to all the other students within the group of batch four, even without like, you know, necessarily withdrawing a salary or something. So I was like, if this guy can help other people and be so engaged for fun, he'll probably do a very good job if it is if he's getting paid for it. And even today, the way I look at it is that he just enjoys doing it. See, Monday is his marriage. And Friday, he can't resist himself showing up on this session, right? So that level of inclination and enthusiasm is what I look for in team members and employees. And co-founder position is already taken. So I don't think there are more positions available for co-founders. But if you want to become a team member, work with us, then uh, just keep showing up. Be in our radar keep doing retargeting for your own personal brand and we'll be like, hmm, this person seems interesting. Uh, on top of it, Jayant is a PhD dropout. So, so that is like also a measure of uh, how much he's into digital marketing and wants to like, you know, some sometimes when you go down in a path so deep and then you are changing something you can only do when you have so much conviction, right? So, so that shows his level of dedication that when he did it, he did it with full dedication.
but when it was time to like you know disconnect from it and get out of it and imagine spending years of psychological investment into a personal uh, you know uh, an investment or uh, into a goal or a, wanting to create an identity imagine dr jayant right he would have become dr jayant and all that and then he kind of just dropped everything and then like chalo let's do digital marketing and sales this is where the money is so i think that i definitely like because i am like that uh, i do something for like a while and then if i feel like a strong conviction like you know change direction i have done that enough times now i feel like okay this is one thing that we have to do consistently like imagine right now i am 35 years old that 70 years old also i am like doing weekly session freelance friday welcome guys welcome to freelance friday imagine the kind of compounding effect it could have right so so that is these are the factors that uh, we did and uh, this actually all the factors i said only mattered for hiring giant as an employee but not as a co-founder and when i had uh, an office set up in bangalore and i asked all the employees to come and work out of bangalore for like a month and then i thought all these people will go back giant was like i'm not going back i will just sit and work here right <laughs> So, yeah. so that it, level of dedication. I was like, uh, uh, I so need I think, to with this particular person for the rest of my life, probably. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I think uh, definitely uh, it it needs sacrifice. Even I don't like you know visit my parents so often. I am like sitting at Bangalore building this business and everything. So for everything, you need a certain level of sacrifice. And we also have very supportive. uh plus ones sanjay is very supportive for my entrepreneurship i see that in in uh, jayant's fiance who is going to become jayant's wife two days later so so all that i think uh, were consideration factors for taking jayant as a co-founder and so far no regrets and onwards and upwards yeah yes awesome yeah cool awesome um good good questions guys and uh, we will see you in the next week freelance freelance friday please ask jayant not to show up next week <laughs> <laughs> or next week sandhya said it sandhya said also like ah, not... sandhya said shit and yeah. thoda honeymoon kar lo and <laughs> <laughs> yeah right. chalo uh, good night guys i will see you in the next session say bye sandhya bye bye all right and That's it. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.